What you see behind me is a picture of the Grand Canyon National Park in the United States. Now, what I want you to look at is these layers of rocks, you know. You can tell that there's quite distinct layers when it comes to rocks, right? And different layers of rocks will have different age. And what scientists will do is that they will go into these places safely and they will gather rock sample and do this process called carbon dating. Okay, or uh, this is an example of using the carbon isotope to decide what is the age of the rock. But in this example, we're not going to look at carbon because carbon is mainly for living tissue. So maybe if they find, they find a, piece of, a piece of fossil, carbon dating would be good. But if let's say I look at the rock, we are going to look at the rubidium strontium dating. Okay, so different layers of rock will have different age and we are going to use that dating process to help us determine the age of the rock. This is a short and quick example to introduce you to the equation for radioactive decay. N is equal to N naught E negative lambda T. Okay, how to use it in situations where you're supposed to use it for carbon dating or in this case, strontium dating. So if you're ready, let's go. This is a question I got from one of your textbooks, okay? So it says here, uh, isotope of rubidium. Uh, the symbol is typed wrongly. Maybe it's written by a physics teacher, okay? So our 87, 37 rubidium decays by beta decay to 87, 38 strontium, which is a stable isotope. So strontium is stable. Okay, there's a beta decay. Just to complete the equation, this is what you will get. Okay, so right now, you are given the half-life of this decay process. 4.9 times 10 to the power of 10 years. That's why we can find the age of these rocks, you know. You can see the zoom in of the layers. We can take a rock sample here and detect the isotope of rubidium inside. All right. Okay, so the ratio of strontium to rubidium in a sample rock is found to be 0 0.0060. So this is a ratio of strontium to rubidium is equal to 0 0.0060. This is number, so this is the number of particles of strontium divided by rubidium. Assuming that there were no strontium rocks when the rock was formed, calculate the age of the rock. Not doing the rock Johnson la. Okay. So if you remember your decay graph, this graph, oh, it would decrease exponentially. Yeah. So in the beginning, <laughs> you only have rubidium. Okay. And then as it passes through, uh, more rubidium will become strontium. So this is the decay curve for rubidium. Okay, whereas your strontium will increase like this. Okay, so this is strontium SR. So somewhere along this uh, line, okay, hang on, it's a bit weird. It should be the same level. So somewhere along this line, not sure where, the ratio is this much. So let's say a certain time t, this time t, because calculate the age of the rock is T1. So that means if I take rubidium and strontium, and then I ratio, ratio of strontium to rubidium, I get something like this, okay? Calculate the age of the rock. So what should we do? Okay, so I think I'll start off with the ratio first, okay? And then I'll figure out what to do with the equation. So I also know the equation of this rubidium N is equal to N naught E negative lambda T. And I know that somewhere along the line, I will have to use lambda. So as a preemptive measure, I'm going to number one. These are all just sketching to understand the question. I want to calculate lambda first. All right. So we do step by step. Lambda is ln 2 over half-life. You can find this equation. Okay. In the formula sheet, 0 0.693. Or you could use this one. So I'm going to stick to years, which means whatever value of T I find will be in years. Okay. So if you look at this equation here, right, this lambda and T. Okay. So you can make a note here for yourself that the units for lambda and T will cancel out. 
lambda and t cancel out. Why? Because the exponent power cannot have a unit. So if lambda is in year, then this time must year negative one. So example, let's say I calculate this lambda. Oh, this will be ln two over what was our half life again? Four point nine times ten upon ten. Such a big number, but it's okay. We will press calculator. Ln two divided by four point nine times ten to the power of ten. That would give us one point four one. Four. I'll just write one point four one lah times. Actually, I should write more as f. One point four one four. Actually, it's one point four one four five eight. Ah, yeah, four five lah. Four point four one four one five. Okay, times ten to the power negative eleven. Year negative one. This is the unit because this four point nine times ten to the power ten is year. Okay, so now if you look at lambda t, whatever lambda t you're going to find now, uh, if this is the unit year negative one, then this one would take the unit of year so that when you multiply them, they cancel out and then you can exponent them. Uh, okay, just keep that in mind, especially later when you do harder activity question. But right now we're going to talk about ratio. So the number of strontium SR divide by the number of rubidium is equal to 0 0.0060. I know how to find number of rubidium, right? This will be n not e negative lambda t. I mean, I can minus later, but this one here is n not. Okay? So this one is not a problem. And, uh, 0 0.0060. But the question here is, what is the number of particles for strong tip? Hmm? What do you think? When one decrease, the other one increase, right? When you add them up together, they will be n naught. So I know for a fact, if I take the number of SR plus the number... Okay, let me organize things a bit for you by drawing lines. Okay, and zoom in a bit. If I take the number of SR plus the number of rubidium, this will give us N naught. Because there's a total number of nucleus, what? It's either I have yet to be decayed, so I am strong, I am rubidium, or I already decayed and I'm strontium. Okay? If you need to watch the same, hang on a sec. Okay, this is familiar. Right, so when I press play, you can see red turning into gray showing decay. So now I have 100 particles, uh, n is 100. I play, you can see some of them change, some of them don't change. But if I take the red plus the gray, I will always get 100. Okay, in fact, I can make this number really big and get you the graph that we wanted just now. Ta da! Okay, so I'm going to make my head smaller first so you can look at the graph. Okay, so look. So this is what is happening. The red one is your rubidium. The grey one is your strontium. And no matter what you do, when you add these two graphs together, you will always get 1006. Pretty nice. Very good. Okay, so we want to find the time. I don't know la, what this time is. Okay, let me show you graph only. We want to find a time. Nah, ta -da. I don't know la, which time here. Where the ratio of this to this is 0 0.06. Okay, so let us go back to the question now. Look. So the number of strontium plus the number of rubidium will always be the initial sample size, which is n naught. Uh, we have the rubidium, so the number for strontium plus rubidium is n naught e negative lambda t. It's equal to n naught. So you can find your strontium particles will be n naught minus 
and not e negative lambda t. Okay, don't be intimidated. Lambda is just like any old function, right? You should be able to manipulate this. So the first thing I will notice is that I can factorize my n naught. So let us do that first. Factorizing your n naught is one minus e negative lambda t. Okay, so this is the number of strontium. Okay, so I'm going to put that inside here. If you're wondering why I do it, it's because if I... Hang on, I need this to pen properly. It's a no trackpad problem. Okay, so I'm going to put the strontium here. This will be n naught bracket 1 minus e negative lambda t. So it is obvious now why I factorize, because I can cancel the n naught. All right. And I'm not really afraid to solve this equation. So just chill a bit first. Don't worry about it. First things first is now I notice that I have a fraction. But I can simplify this fraction. Nah. Correct. How to simplify? Ah? You cross multiply first. Nah. That's the first thing you should think about, right? To cross multiply. What are we looking for? We're looking for t. We already have lambda. We will substitute when the time is right. You substitute now. Ah, you go and copy this number. Very heady. Okay. So now you just uh, rearrange, right? And uh, I will cross multiply. 1 minus e negative lambda t. So this will be 0 0.0060 multiplied by e negative lambda t. You can treat this e negative lambda t as an entire function on its own. Uh, you know, like x is its own thing. So this e negative lambda t is its own thing. Okay. So right now, I'm going to bring this one over because I need to find t. Ma, so it's best to gather them together. So when we gather this together, e negative lambda t, negative becomes plus e negative lambda t. And this e negative lambda t got 1 in front, right? So this, we can factorize out e negative lambda t. Take it out. So just treat this entire exponent, especially if you're not familiar with this because you don't take maths, as just an unknown like x that we can factorize. E negative lambda t, big bracket, this will be plus 1 now, 1 1.0060. But if you're familiar with this, you don't have to go through that many steps. Okay? So it's just for those who don't do maths and they're stressed with the equation. Don't worry. Okay? I will run you through it again later. So by pressing calculator... I'm just going to take 1 divided by 1.0060. And this will give me, you know what? I think for my answer to be more accurate, I'm just going to keep this one here and press wait. Okay, this is E negative lambda t. All right, so once uh, I'm satisfied E negative lambda t is tight on its own, I bring over and long. So I will launch this one, 1 over 1 1.0060. Of course, you can put a negative sign there. That is okay. But I'm not going to really bother. This is negative lambda t. Okay. So from previous calculation, we have already calculated lambda. 1.415 times 10 to the power of negative 11. Okay. So I'm just put here, lambda is 1.415 times 10 to the power of negative 11. So we're going to substitute that in ln 1 over 1.0060 negative 1 1.415 times 10 to the power of negative 11 times t. We are there now. We can press calculator already. 4.2 times 10 to the power of 8 years. So pretty old piece of rock, if you ask me. Okay, so this is the age of the rock. Okay, let us recap quickly what we have done. We've got a sample from the Grand Canyon, a piece of rock, and we are studying this decay equation. Rubidium becoming strontium, releasing beta decay. We are told that the ratio of strontium to rubidium is this. Okay, so I know I'm somewhere I'm going to have to use lambda anyway because I'm going to use this equation. This n is equal to n not e negative lambda t. So I preemptively look for lambda. If you are not like 
if you're not stressed about this, you can find lambda at the end. Okay, I'm just writing this so that I can get marked early, early. All right. So if I know the ratio of rubidium, I mean strontium to rubidium, right? Then I got a second problem ready. Because of, you see here, you see here, you see here, you see here. I know rubidium. N is N not E negative lambda T. But why is strontium? Strontium is the initial, which is N not minus N. Does that make sense? Because strontium plus rubidium must always be N not. So the, the amount, the total initial amount, this N not here, this N not, oops, let me highlight everybody. This N not and this N not and this N not. This one is the initial number of undecayed rubidium. Okay, the initial number. All right. And finally, if I put inside and I rearrange and factorize, because I take N0 minus this one, I can factorize the N0. I get this. Okay. Then I can plug it into the ratio. So I'm plugging it into the ratio. Up here will be 1 minus, down here will be E. If you're stressed about the exponents, don't be, because you can treat them as a great big unknown and throw them around until you are ready to unlon them, bring over to lon. So you can always treat this E negative lambda T as a single giant unknown and move them around like how you would do x until you arrive at this state okay and then when you arrive at this state then you throw the e over to become not ah then after that it's simple algebra okay so this is an example of how the exponents will be asked not just in regarding uh number of nuclei but also in this idea called activity or count rate that will be in one of the next lecture videos okay i think that's it for this one i guess it's not so short after all if you find this helpful i hope you learn something and i'll see you in the next past year examples hopefully one day you will be able to travel to the grand canyon and think about the physics of rock dating okay to date the rock to find out the age of the rock. Okay, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.